Gordo, do you have any opening remarks? <laughs> He said no. On my pursuit to take down haters, I've decided to do a video today that I've kind of done before. One of my favorite functions on Goodreads to sort my books that I've read or are on my TBR from what's the best rated to the worst rated. Cause it's just a good litmus test to know like everyone's loving this right now and it's at the top of your TBR or maybe you got this book from a library book sale for a dollar and it actually has like a 2.43 rating on Goodreads. The one thing I have not done is look at the books I have read and see which of those are high rated and low rated across all of Goodreads. And let me tell you, when I sorted the books that I've read from the lowest rated to the highest rated and I looked at the first like 10 pages of low rated books, I was flabbergasted at some of the books that were at the bottom of the list. Some of them rightfully deserved to be at the very bottom and honestly some of them that I thought would be at the bottom were nowhere near the bottom. Some of the worst books that I have ever read ranked above these. So I don't know if you figured it out yet but the video I'm going to be doing is defending those books that I've read that somehow have a super low rating on Goodreads. I hand wrote a list and this is going to be 10 books that I feel like do not deserve the rating as low as they are. I don't know if people really even use Goodreads ratings anymore to decide if something's worth picking up. I'm gonna go in descending order and talk about these books that I feel like don't deserve that low of a rating. Or maybe they do, but I just want to sit here and defend them so that if you ever see them around and you're like, huh, that's a pretty low rating, you can think of me and I'm gonna be here telling you to read it despite what society says. So just for some grounding, my average rating on Goodreads is a 3.65, which I feel like is pretty positive. It's like average. So all of these books are ones that are below my average rating. So the first book I want to talk about is just under that at a 3.64 stars. And this is the one that I am the most astonished is on this list because it was one of my favorite books of last year. This is Twice Tempted by a Rogue by Tessa Dare, which is the second book in the Stud Club series. It is actually criminal that this book is here because I gave this book five stars. This book was so good. The whole series premise is that it's these men that are in this club revolving around a stallion. That's neither here nor there. But the first one is about a guy with anxiety. And this one is about a guy who used to be in the military and has retired. He returns to his hometown that his parents used to run. They were like the Duke or whatever. And everyone hates him because his family ran the town into the ground and he's decided that he wants to make it right and make the town great again. Oh God. Anyway, so it's about him. His name's Reese. He meets the barmaid of the town who's like the only one willing to hear him out and give him a chance. And that's them. And I love them so much. Tessa Dare has this immaculate writing style that makes you feel like you're there. And I've read like over a thousand books now. When you do that, you tend to read a lot of books that sound the same. There's turns of phrase and ways of describing things that just become the status quo. But this book describes things in word choices and lyrical prose that I have never heard before. It's so original and unique and true to the time. Their dialogue reads like you're watching Bridgerton. Like it is just so dynamic. They jump off the page at you. There's so much angst. This book has both plot and porn. I genuinely don't understand why this doesn't have a higher rating because it's so good. And maybe you kind of have to be a touch deprived virgin to really get these. So I might just be exposing myself by saying that this is the best series of all time because maybe it's really not that great and I'm just desperate. I tapped the heck out of this one. The first one is even worse. I'm currently reading the third book. I'm seven pages in and I already know it's gonna be pretty high up there in rating. You have to give these a shot. I promise this is the one I'm gonna go on and on about the most because I have the most to say about it because I can't believe it's on this list. But go give Tessa Dare some love. She deserves it. Not a 3.6. Now we enter the graphic novel section of this video which I was kind of surprised at. I used to read graphic novels a ton in college because they were like quick and easy. Now not so much anymore so I'm pretty selective with the ones I like and these all are on the list of ones that I like so I don't get why they're so low. But number nine on the list is a 3.6 rating and it's Moonstruck. I can't believe this isn't ranked better because I adore this graphic novel. This is about two girls. It's a female female relationship. They live in a world where there's like fantastical creatures. Like one of them's a shapeshifter. There's witches. There's like a minotaur. There's a centaur who's non-binary. The one thing I will say about this is I understand why people don't love it because the action is a little bit strange. The relationship in this and the friendships and the banter and dialogue is so sweet 
sweet. It's set in like a magical coffee shop with all these creatures, which is so fun. It's such a diverse cast of characters. There's so much going on. Like it's really fast paced. I don't know why this is rated so low. It is so precious. This next graphic novel I feel like is kind of on the underground. I don't know if it's that widely known, but this one's called The End of Summer by Tilly Walden. Just the fact that I own all of these, excuse me, Gordo. I get rid of books that I didn't enjoy. So the fact that I still own these is bonkers first of all. So this is a graphic novel that I think is one of Tilly Walden's more underrated ones. She has a couple other titles that popped off a lot more than this one, but I will say I don't love Tilly Walden's art and writing style because I feel like her characters can tend to show up in books a bit emotionless, which might be because a lot of her books deal with like depression and ennui, so it could just be true to the title, but this is one of her only graphic novels, if not her only graphic novel, that I feel like that tone really fits this storyline and this is such a cool plot. This is a book about a kid who it's kind of in this fantastical world where there's been a winter that lasts like a century so everyone is locked in this giant castle and the main character is like a little sickly boy who rides around the house on his giant cat and I don't remember really what the plot of this is but I remember absolutely loving it. So those vibes of like being trapped in a house, feeling under the weather, like it's snowy and blue. The vibes of this were just so melancholy. I don't know if this is a book that would be fun to read post-COVID. <laughs> it's definitely not like action-packed and has twists and turns, but it was just a really nice, almost cozy, but kind of sad read. I really recommend it. I don't know why it only has a 3.58 star rating on Goodreads. You like how I snuck in the rating at the end there because I forgot? This is the last graphic novel and this is the criminal one. This book got a 3.56 average rating on Goodreads and genuinely this might be my favorite graphic novel of all time. So I don't know what y'all are going on about but Snot Girl, specifically volume one but I'm assuming the people who read this and rated it low did not continue. But this is by Brian Lee O'Malley and Leslie Hung. It's about an influencer in LA who has allergies so she's snotty and insecure about that. But it's just about her and her friend group. It kind of goes a little absurdist and there start to be like murders and weird things that happen and the more that she meets other influencers and like tries to cover up all the not picturesque things in her life, like the worse her life spirals. And the only thing that I can imagine that people are turned off by this book, which is a reason why probably several more books on this list are here, is because this is not something to be read at face value. If I was reading this rooting for the main character, trying to relate to the plot, we would not be having a fun time because this main character and her friend group is insufferable. They're awful people. There's like these unsolved murders that come out of nowhere and they're really confusing, but it just feeds into the frenzy of the plot. I don't think it's supposed to be sensical. I don't think you're supposed to relate to and root for the main character. I think you're supposed to look at what a shit show this is. I love a hot girl who's mean and bad. I support women's rights and women's wrongs and this is the embodiment of that. So this book will leave you confused but it will be such a fun time. If you are into that reality TV kind of vibe of of just watching people's lives fall apart. I think you would really be into this. I gave like all of these five stars. I don't think they've even announced when volume four is coming out, but I would be pre-ordering because I love these. I swear, this is like my favorite graphic novel. I'm not even kidding. The next book on this list, I might need a hall pass because I did read this for class, so I might've gotten more out of it with all that discussion around it, but Moby Dick by Herman Melville. I will say I'm shocked that there was only one classic on this list because I feel like a lot of people just rate all the classics they read for school like one star. I mean I think there were classics but I also agree that I didn't like them as much but this is one that I'm gonna sit here and be like no 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 no. Listen, Moby Dick deserves a better reputation. I know that everyone thinks of Moby Dick and they're like oh I've heard that that book has like really meandering chapters that are just about like whale sperm. And the thing I will say is yeah we do have some hearty discussions about whale sperm as a normal woman will do on a Tuesday afternoon, but the chapters that are unrelated to the ongoing storyline are really short. And overall, I would consider this a pretty accessible classic. Like, obviously it's pretty thick. You might have to take your time with it, but 
The language of it is not incomprehensible and the themes Ahab and the White Whale are some of the most intricately developed characters I've ever read about. This whole conflict of like man versus nature and the obsession he has with finding this whale and the way that that transforms into so many metaphors. This made me feel the way I did reading The Great Gatsby which is one of my favorite books of all time. There's just so much meaning to unpack in the book but it's not like so overcomplicated that you feel stupid reading it which is one of my pet peeves when reading classics oh my god i'm just flipping through this and reading through some quotes and i'm like should i reread this it's so good i think it's worth defending because i had a blast reading it all right the next book i read is an ebook so i don't have it but it is the book fit by Rebecca Weatherspoon. this book only had a 3.46 star rating and i refuse to let that one slide. This is around where I started reading reviews so I could understand like why people would hate on the books. So the vibes that I got from this one were that people were upset that it was too short and it had BDSM in it, which I think is interesting considering it's a novella about BDSM, but whatever. I can't remember the main character's name, but it's a woman who decides to sign up for a gym membership to get healthier and she goes there obviously like plus sized and nervous about being judged. However, she meets a man that works there he's one of the trainers and they develop this bond and he's like helping her through her workouts but like super non-judgmentally and then finally that evolves into them seeing each other and you find out that he's a dom and he likes bdsm so she's like okay i'm like okay so yeah it is pretty short but it was so sweet. There was such a good balance of semi-intense bedroom stuff, but also they just had this really good connection outside of the bedroom. So there's multiple things folded into that of like her on this journey to better herself and her feeling supported by him and the way that he is super kind to her, but then in the bedroom can throw her around. Like, I loved this book. I can't believe it was rated so low. I highly recommend it. It was very body positive, sex positive. It's written by a black author. Like, you can't lose. The fourth book on this list with a rating of 3.43 is another one I can't keep saying criminal, but this one is so shocking to me. It's A Merry Little Meet Cute by Julie Murphy and Sierra Simone. So this book's about a porn star who gets casted for like this heartwarming Christmas film and has to hide from people what her true profession is just because she's like a last minute fill-in for someone who couldn't be there. And so it's about her going on to set, keeping her life a secret while the male co-star who's like a celebrity actor and her have to work together. So it's very steamy, but very Christmassy. I am shocked that this one did bad. Cause I feel like TikTok is pretty open about reading raunchy books. And yet this one was so over the top. Was it a little bit ridiculous of a plot? Yeah, but it's a book. <laughs> Not to sound like the people who comment on my reviews of November 9 every day, but it's fictional. I mean, maybe the people who read it and rated it so low just thought that it was gonna be like a cute, harmless, rated PG type of Christmas story, but it got down and dirty pretty fast, which I love. I was the target audience for that book. I rated it pretty high. I don't own a copy of it, but I do think I would revisit it someday down the road in December. One of the reviews that I saw for it, I think it was the top review, said they like reading books about plus size men characters, but why do you have to mention it so frequently? And I find it a little weird and fat phobic that people don't want to be reminded that a main character is fat. I wonder how much of this book is rooted in that and people's reactions to a fat main character living her best life having fun being sexual i'm not trying to pin the low writing on people's fat phobia but i just think it's interesting maybe people just didn't know what they were getting into when they signed up for it but i knew full well it was gonna be raunchy and i read the ever loving shit out of it so I loved it. We've got to get more people on board to raise that review up. All right, book number three on this list has a 3.42 rating. This is the last one that I own a copy of. Honestly, I don't know why, but I read this book in college. It's called The Average American Male by Chad Coltgen. I read this at a time where I was really into feminist literature, and this is kind of the antithesis of that. I thought what it did was really cool. So this is set from the perspective of a man I can't remember if he's like going through a breakup, but he definitely is having a moment with a girlfriend and maybe cheating on her, maybe just breaking up with her. But basically the whole design of this book is that you're reading this stream of consciousness from this really depraved man's perspective. So every single thought he has objectifies women. Every single thought he has describes his own like weaponized incompetence and his insecurity. Just a very toxic masculine 
identity. Like this book is vulgar <laughs> and I don't know that it would be that fun to read. Again, I go back to that's the point. The whole purpose of this is hyperbole. And I'm sure there have been men that read that and go, well, I don't think like that. Or maybe just women are reading it. Like, why is that so gross? I didn't really d dive into these reviews just because seeing this on this list made sense. Honestly, if I read it nowadays, I might agree that it's just pointless and stupid. But at the time that I read it, I think I was just so happy to read something that validated that men do suck. <laughs> you can infer the consequences of what it's like to live in this kind of mindset, which is not a positive one. This would be a difficult thing to recommend because it's like 200 pages of a guy just shitting on women, but I didn't hate it. I thought it was interesting. I liked the subtle themes. I keep saying themes like I'm in seventh grade English, but the way that it subtly led you to the conclusions of, hey, this is not a good guy. Of course, this is not how people should be writing or thinking about women, but come along for this journey and see where it takes them. I don't know. I think I gave it like three or four stars, but I'm not surprised that this is on the list. <laughs> the second to last book I'll talk about that has a pretty low rating, it's a 3.36, is an ebook called Trapped by the Wolf. <laughs> by Juno Blake. This is one that I read recently and I will say I'm not going to recommend this widely. It is a very niche book but it is a Beauty and the Beast retelling novella about this like shape-shifting beast and this woman who shows up at his manor. So it's like a monster romance. It's like primal kink and Stockholm syndrome and all that shit. Here's the thing, for what it is, it's pretty well written. Like there are so many books out there that are just like one shots of terrible tropes and really cringy writing. But I thought this one actually gave it a pretty fair shot. And that might be because I love Beauty and the Beast retellings. I think I gave this like four stars. I wish it were a longer book. It's just like that one little snippet. I think it turns into a novella trilogy, which I think is the laziest thing ever. If you just want something short and punchy and raunchy and entertaining, like this is the perfect thing. I feel like there's a lot of erotica ebooks that are not well written and kind of just deserve to be read and not even rated on Goodreads because they were just something fun and easy to skim. But this one genuinely I feel like has potential for like mainstream publishing and that's some high praise. This made me feel the way I do when I read Catherine Moon, who I feel like has one of the best writing styles and tackles monster romance in a really like healthy adjacent way. I just really liked it. I can't say much else. But that brings us to our final book which is the lowest rated book that I've read that I disagree with. This book has a whopping 3.2 and it was The Pisces by Melissa Broder. And immediately I kind of understand why this is here because this is a book about a woman named Lucy who has just been through a breakup I think. She's in her late 30s. She's house sitting for her sister that lives on like Venice Beach and during this time where she's just alone and processing with the loss of her partner, she kind of spirals into love addiction. So it really reminds me of this, but from the opposite perspective, not necessarily in like the vulgar writing style way, but it's just a hyperbolic look at this woman being obsessed with sex and obsessed with having a partner and being in love and the links that she'll go to in order to get that. So the crux of the book of the reason why there's a fish on the cover is because there's also this fantastic element where she looks out onto the beach one night and sees like a merman and that then becomes her obsession so it's like her having sex with this merman and it's supposed to be absurd and I think people are reading this at face value and they're like oh my god she's a terrible person you're not supposed to root for her it's very like snot girl where it's like it's a book that you have to read if you want to see someone spiral past being able to help her <laughs> I had so much fun reading this book here's a thing that I'll sell you on it I read that book in one sitting. That does not happen for me anymore, but I could not put that book down. It's weird and it's so stupid, but it's really an investigation into such human emotions like desperation. One of the reviews that I saw that was one of the first positive reviews after the original couple that were pretty low. They said that the kind of people who marked this book with a low rating are quote, either neurotypical or avoidant of truly unpleasant introspection, which I thought summed that up perfectly. I'm not a fan of reading 
bad reviews of the books that I like because I feel like a lot of the times it's pretty valid and I don't want to make myself sad but just for these handful of books where people really went off and I think either missed the point or just didn't get the same thing out of it that I did I wanted to sit here and defend them so that is my list of 10 books I'm sure there are people here that agree, disagree and are part of the stream of voices that are sitting here and lowering the rating but for anyone who hasn't read any of these books I just wanted to throw my two cents in there and get you to change your mind if at all you were swayed by an average rating on Goodreads. I feel like I've talked for long enough. I'll leave you off here. I was gonna say let me know if you disagree, but nope. You're wrong. I would love to hear your reactions down below or if there's any books that you love that have a low rating and you want to defend them. But other than that, hope you have a great day. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!